Hey guys, today we have a really fun problem for you and it's got three really strong solution paths depending upon how you're wired, how you want to approach the problem. We're going to take a look at this problem with a running scenario solution path, a system of equations algebraic solution path, and with a number theoretic solution path, which might be considered a logical solution path. We're being asked about the total number of coins Bert and Claire have together. And we're going to tackle this first with scenarios. If we look at number one, Bert has 50% more than Claire. So if Claire has 10, Bert has 15. If Claire has 50, Bert has 75. 50% more. But that's not enough. Bert and Claire could have any combination of coins. We have no restrictive mechanism to tell us specifically how many Bert has or how many Claire has to bring this into focus and get a single answer. So number one is insufficient. Number two doesn't provide us any relationship between Bert and Claire's coins, but gives us a restrictive range. So while two is also going to be insufficient because we have no idea whether it's 22 or 27 or anything in between, we now might be able to combine it with number one in order to figure this out. So now we can run some scenarios. If Claire has 10 coins and Bert has 15, that brings us to 25. But we have these other numbers in the range. So our question is, can we run other scenarios to make another amount of coins within that range valid, or is 25 the only one available? If Claire has nine coins, then Bert is going to have a fraction of a coin. Because 50% more means that nine plus four and a half, 13 and a half, but we're not allowed to have part of a coin. So notice when the GMAT uses whole numbers, a lot of times they'll use people or animals or coins, something that can't be divided, that can't be fractional or decimal. So nine is out. What if Claire has eight coins? Then Bert has 12. That brings us to 20. That's below our range. We already know 10 and 15 bring us to 25. That's the first one in our range. If Claire has 12 and Bert has 12 plus 6, 18, that brings us to 30. That's on the other side of the range. So the only viable scenario is the 25. Therefore, answer C, both together are sufficient. We can also look at this in terms of parts. Notice that for every two parts Claire has, Bert has three parts. That is, taking Claire's total and adding 50% gets from her two parts to his three parts. And the parts are arbitrary. We can cut them up any way we want to. We can make Claire's parts four, Bert's parts six, but two and three is the simplest. So all told, Bert and Claire are going to have five parts. The parts are undefined, but this tells us that the total must be divisible by five, whatever it is. Therefore, the only viable solution within our restricted range is 25. That is, it's the only number in there that's divisible by five. Therefore, both together are sufficient. We have the rule from number one, and we have the restricted range from number two. Finally, we can take a look at this from a system of equations standpoint where number one gives us this equation that Bert equals Claire plus 50%, or Bert equals 1.5 times Claire. Either one works, they're both the same algebraically. That is, they both describe the same relationship. Number two tells us an inequality that B plus C is in between. While this might not look like an equation, it is a range and we can treat inequalities very much like equations for the purposes of narrowing down. So while this isn't a perfect solution path, it lets us know that we have a system and that if there's only one instance within that range, that this will be sufficient. And so if we tackle it from that system of equation standpoint, we then have to go in and just run a scenario and we end up back where we started on that solution path. So I hope this demystifies this problem for you guys. Check out the links below for some others, and we'll see you again real soon.